Hey, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, my father and I shared that Bible verse. It's Psalms 118, verse uh, 24. And uh, we shared that for decades from the pulpit uh, of the churches that we have, we have pastored. My father's first church was actually in uh, Ivanhoe Reformed Church in, um, that would be in Ivanhoe, uh, Illinois. And uh, he was there for several years. And in fact, my oldest sister was born there and I was born there. So from there, he accepted a call to the Garden Grove to start a church and uh, did very well doing that. Hey, good morning, Debbie King. It's good to have you joining us this morning. And um, um, so anyway, we're going to have a little little worship service here. And the way we would start always was with Psalm 118, and then we go into prayer. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious morning where we can come together from around the world, literally around the globe, to worship you. And so we thank you, Lord, for the technology that allows us to be able to do this amazing thing, to gather together live. And so, bless this time, O oh Lord. May our hearts be filled with your presence, and may we be, uh, be encouraged and enlightened and inspired through these moments together. We love you, Lord. Amen. So, boy, I'm really glad you could join us, everyone who is joining us. And uh, so, so, Donna Hutchins, good morning to you. And uh, let's see, Mark Fitzgerald, and the list goes on and on. But um, anyway, today is the third Sunday, <clears throat> the third Sunday of Easter. Now, let me just share with you a little bit about church calendars. You know, most people are familiar that the church does have a calendar. Uh, we know about Easter Sunday, and we know about Christmas, and many of you know about Holy Week. But from there, it starts getting obscure. But the fact is that the church has a calendar that it follows, pen following for centuries. And today is actually the, considered the third Sunday of Easter. You have Easter Sunday, and then the following Sunday is Easter 1, then the following Sunday is Easter 2, which would have been last week, and today is, is the third one, so therefore it's Easter 3. So we have five Sundays after Easter, which are all considered part of the, the Easter calendar. And so, with that in mind, I'm going to share with you my reading from Matthew. And um, <clears throat> actually, I'm reading from Matthew 28, and then also from Mark 16. So, I'm reading from the, my Life of Jesus Bible. I think you might be able to see that. It's not actually a, a Bible. What it is, is it's the Gospels. It's only the Gospels. And what they do is they've taken the four Gospels and they've combined them together to... Um, so for our reading, so I want to I want to encourage you to to listen along with me as as we read our our Bible for today. The eleven believers went to Galilee, in the mountains where Jesus told them to go. On the mountain, the followers saw Jesus. They worshipped him, but some of the followers did not believe that it was really Jesus. So he came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me, so go and make followers of all people in the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have told you to do. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But those who do not believe will be judged guilty. And the people who believe will be able to do these things as proof. Here are the things they'll be able to do. They will use my name to force demons out of people. They will speak in languages that they've never learned. If they pick up, a, pick up snakes or drink any poison, they will not be hurt. They will lay their hands on sick people and they will get well. You can be sure that I will be with you always. I will come with you 
until the end of time. I will continue with you until the end of time. So that's our reading for the for the third Sunday of Easter. And before I go on and talk about that a little bit, because there's a lot to talk about in that, that's an interesting passage. I just want to remind you that um, I'm in the I'm involved in a project where I'm creating lessons to help people through the toughest times in life. And in order for you to be able to to find out more about that, I want to set, I want to encourage you to 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 sign up for some the first lessons, which are absolutely free. Uh, go to my website. I have a new website, and all it is right now is a, is a landing page where you can sign up. So go sign up for these free lessons. The, the landing page is robertshulerinspiration.com. That's robertshulerinspiration.com. So go there and sign up for that. If you haven't done so ever, uh, done so already, I know we've had lots of people who have done that, done that already. So I'll be sending something out very soon. I've got to tell you, this is just the infancy project, uh, and it's and and I've been a little challenged here with the editing and doing some of these things, but but uh, I really am enjoying it, and the material is terrific. It, you will find it inspiring. You will find it encouraging. It will be very helpful to you and to people you may know who are going through some tough times because I don't know anybody who isn't going through tough times. Period. Everybody is dealing with something. If you look at the amount of people who are addicted uh, to drugs, 20, over 21 million people. If you look at the fact that we have over 86 million people in America, in, in America alone, that's almost... That's so about 25% of the population says they're depressed. If you realize the amount of death that people have to deal with, how many people die every year, we all know people who have died from one thing or another, and, and it's always sad, and it's that grief uh, affects us. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm having classes on how to deal with grief, how to deal with divorce, how to deal with all of these different circumstances that people have in life. And, and I want to share this information with you and, and let you share it with some of your others but, and some of your friends. And, but the only way you can do that is if you go and you sign up so I can, I can let you know about this. Again, it's, it's robertshulerinspiration.com. That's robertshulerinspiration.com. I think you'll, you'll be really glad you did this. It doesn't cost you a thing. It's just absolutely a, a tremendous opportunity. So let's, let's go back for a minute to to our little Bible reading we had today, because um, <clears throat> one of the first things, I, I wanted to stop a couple times and, and, and go over this because it's, I wanted to do it more like a, more like a, a, a Bible study instead of, instead of a sermon, because this isn't exactly a church service. It is, but not quite. Uh, we're a lot more relaxed. We're here live. Um, I'm talking to you. I'm not getting any feedback except for some thumbs up, which I like, and some hearts, and, and a few comments. Oh, I, I, there is some comments. I agree. It's nice to see you again. It's nice that you are doing this online. Ah, oh, thank you, Ruth. I appreciate that. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I appreciate the comments, and so we can, we can definitely uh, have some feedback like this. But, but on, the, on the passage of Scripture that I read today, um, here's one of the things it said, so go and make followers of all people in the world, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, I've had people tell me more than once, ask me more than once, what was the highlight of, of your ministry? And, um, uh, there's no question for me. I answer the, I answer that question immediately. Uh, it was, Evil, God, we, it's, we just call it Evil Knievel Sunday. Um, not that uh, that is in the church calendar as Evil Knievel Sunday, but uh, it is in the minds and the hearts of people who were there. What, a, what an amazing event, what an amazing time that was. Now, let, me, let me share and tell you what happened. Uh, evil Knievel sent a, sent a message to my father and said he wanted to go on the hour of power and tell the world what happened to him that he became a, a Christian, that he's, he, he wants everyone to know, and then he wants to be baptized. 
So my father wasn't sure what to make of that. So the first thing he did is he went to Florida and he met with them because he wanted to make sure that this is, that he was legit, that he just wasn't making this up. It wasn't looking, this wasn't a PR stunt. And he discovered that, that unfortunately evil was on his last days. He didn't have long to live. And he was indeed a changed man. His heart was pure and his commitment was sincere. And so my father invited him to be a guest on the Hour of Power, and, and we interviewed him. And uh, the interview was so powerful and so dynamic. There was not a dry eye in the entire Crystal Cathedral. There was over 3,000 people in there. there was, it was jammed. There was, wasn't an empty seat. People were standing up. And Evil Knievel just went on and told about his life how he had been driven with, with, with greed and with materialism and with the wild, fast-paced life and, and that he had spent his life in the wrong way and that it wasn't too late for, for him and it's not too late for anyone else and that the blood of Jesus Christ saved him and it was the most powerful message you could possibly imagine. And like I said, there wasn't a dry eye in the place when he was finished. And, I, and my father then baptized him, and everyone, I can, it's very clear, everyone was very emotionally touched by, the, by this occasion, by this testimony. And I said to myself, there's nothing I can say that will, that will improve the situation. So what do I do? I'm supposed to go in there and del deliver my message that I've prepared for that Sunday. And I decided I wasn't going to give a message, but instead I was just going to invite anyone else who hadn't been baptized to come forward at this time and be baptized. And so I gave the invitation. And instantly people stood up and came to me, and I started baptizing as fast as I could. By the time it was, we realized that some of the other pastors realized this wasn't going to work. There was way too many people who wanted to be baptized. So they started getting bowls of, of water to baptize. And I started running out of water. And we're not doing the immersion baptism. We're simply doing the, doing the, the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit baptism. Because the, it's not, the, it's not the, the way you're baptized which matters. It's not the means in which you're baptized. It's the meaning of the baptism, which matters. And so we did what's called sprinkling, in which case we stick the hand in the water, we put it on the head, and we go, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But before I would do that, I'd say, hey, do you love Jesus? And they'd say, yes, I love Jesus. And they'd already heard the gospel message. I mean, they, had all, they were weeping, and they were crying. They, want, they had accepted Jesus, and now they wanted to be baptized. And so we baptized 1,800 people on that Sunday, 1,800. I ran out of water in the bowl. Um, the, somebody came along and poured more water in the bowl so I could keep baptizing. And there was five pastors baptizing. By the time we were done, it was 1,800 people we baptized on one Sunday morning. That was the highlight of my, of my, uh, of my ministry. It has been. And... Um, it was a beautiful occasion. Um, I, I've done baptisms all over the world, actually. I've traveled in, through Europe baptizing people in Africa. Uh, I've baptized recent, recently. I did a, a few baptisms in the Philippines. And uh, I've baptized hundreds of people in the Jordan River. <laughs> I, I have a, a cute story of some uh, I was. This was long before. If you if you go to if you go to the Holy Land today, you, you will see that the that in the Jordan River there's a beautiful place where you go and they have changing rooms. You can get baptism gowns and and it's a it's a it's now almost really very touristy where you can be baptized. When I first started going there in the early seventies, it wasn't like that at all. It was just a natural river and in in, in this. Uh, surrounded by beautiful trees, and you walk down to the river's edge like you would any river that's in the in the in the wilderness, and it was absolutely beautiful. 
So uh, I would I started baptizing in the 70s and in, in, in the Jordan River, and I had this one group. I had a, a half a dozen people who came to me and said, "You know what? We want to be immersed." Well, in order to to do an immersion baptism, immersion means where you get completely underwater. And as they're under the water, you say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then you lift them out of the water again. So we had the half a dozen people who wanted to be immersed. And we are, we're touring throughout Israel. So we'd have to, and we're leaving the following morning. So that means they would, have, they would be completely sopping wet. They'd have to wear these wet, sopping wet clothes for most of the day. And it was really a, 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 a challenge to do that. So I said, here's what we'll do. We'll get up very early in the morning, the crack of dawn, we'll drive down to the, to the Jordan River, I'll baptize you, we'll come back, you can change your clothes, you can get all dressed and, and ready to go before, uh, before we leave for our tour. And leave Because we're, from there we're going up to Jerusalem. So we did that. And we had one, I had one little old lady who wanted to do this. She, was a, she must have been uh, 80 years old. And when, when I immersed her in, in, in the water, her hands started flailing up, her legs were kicking up, and it was the funniest sight I'd ever seen. And I, she wasn't down there for more than a second, and I brought her back up. That was the fastest I'd ever said, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and up she comes. <laughs> oh, it was, it was very fun. It was funny. Uh, but... Baptism is a beautiful sign and symbol of God's love for us. That's what baptism is. And, and what it is, is, is taking, taking the, the symbolism of God's love for us and putting it on our hearts. You know, it is the sign that, that we are chosen by, by God. Uh, and and before, the, before the church, before ba- Jesus told us to be baptized... Um, the, sign, the sign and symbol uh, of, of, of God's love for his people was circumcision. And there's some challenges with circumcision. First of all, only men can be circumcised. Uh, secondly, um, secondly uh, it, was, it was an outward sign, not necessarily an inward sign. And Jesus comes and he tells us to be baptized. So, that is all inclusive. It can be done anywhere. It doesn't require a, a, surger, a surgical procedure. You can do it as an adult with, without any challenges. And it's something that we're called to do. So if you haven't been baptized and you want to be baptized, uh, it would be a good thing for you to contact your church, your local church, tell them you want to be baptized. If you don't want to be immersed, that makes absolutely no difference because, again, it's the meaning of the baptism and not the means. So if you're immersed or if you're sprinkled uh, or if they pour on top of your head, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you accept this gift, this gift of grace and love from God and, and that you understand that now you are truly marked as a child of God, just as sincerely as circumcision was the mark of God's sign and seal or, or stamp or brand on the early people in the early church, so baptism is for us. It's not visible from the outward sign, but it is visible to God, and God knows it, and it's a spiritual sign. So, our Bible verse was... To make to to uh, go and make followers of all people in the world, baptizing them in the name of the of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have told you to do. And you know that's what I'm continuing to do with these classes that I told you about earlier. The whole idea is to is to create inspiration and comfort and peace and at the same time eventually I'm going to get, get classes for entire uh, church history um, uh, uh, theological classes teaching you everything you possibly could, could know uh, about, about Christianity because otherwise what happens is it's real easy to get confused in, in this world today 
I've been reading a, a book. It's a great book. It's called, as it's an old classic book. It's called As a Man Thinketh. It's written by uh, Alan James, I believe. I've been studying that recently, and it's a fabulous read. It really is. But theologically, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, and if you're theologically grounded, you can read books like that, and you can incorporate them into your theology, and they can, you can incorporate the messages, and you can become a better, stronger person. Because what he does in, his, in this book is he talks about how our minds have the power to change and shape, shift our, our bodies and our, our health and our circumstances, all of which has bearing and which is really good. But at the same time, he, he negates the whole theological aspects of the fact that God is in control of our lives. And as such, loses much of that. And so, and so I, I, I want to give you some teaching. But in order to, to, to be able to participate in these things, what you need to do is you need to go to my new website, robertshulerinspiration.com. That's robertshulerinspiration.com. And you can sign up because uh, what I'll do is, I'll, is when I have the classes available, then I'll be able to send them to you, send you a notice and let you know that they're here and, and we can communicate. So I, need, so I need to be able to let you know. And the only way I can let you know about what's, what we have and what we can do for you is, to, is for you to go up and sign up robertshulerinspiration.com so um so i'll i think i should have most of my videos ready uh in about another three to four weeks so please be patient um uh, as i put those together and then i plan on being able to have another another class available every every so often so that we can continue to provide you with uh instruction inspiration hope because it, we are in a painful world. Um, there's over 2 million people who are incarcerated. And all those people who are incarcerated, they have family. Uh, they have brothers, they have sisters, they have children, they have wives, they have husbands. And one of the things I noticed that when I was pastor of the Christ Cathedral, we would, we would gather prayers and I would pray for people constantly. I'd gather these prayer cards and I would many, many of you may have one where I prayed for you today, and I would personally sign all of them. I would pray for them, and then I'd sign sign for them, and I'd read their prayer requests. And I was shocked by how many people were dealing with incarceration, dealing with with criminal lawsuits, uh, criminal cases, uh, and and how that affects families. It's very tragic, and it's very difficult on families. And you, you, some of you may know exactly what I'm talking about. And so, oh, we have Angelica from Germany. Welcome, Angelica. It's good to have you here on, on joining us for this worship service. And so I, so I understand the problems and the frustrations and the challenges that people have. And I want to help you through those and give you the, the, the tools you need to be, and the principles you need that are, that are founded in the Bible, but again tied psychologically with, uh, with the reality of, of life, and give you the tools that can help you become uh, the person that God intended you to become, to have, to have the joy and the peace and the patience and the, and the, and the, and the self-control to be able to be everything you wanted Carol and welcome. Happy, happy Sunday to you too. And Mark Fitzgerald, it's good to have you here. Um, so we're, we're glad you're able to join us. And there's a whole bunch of other people joining us. We're glad to have you as well. Uh, I'm just mentioning a few people if I, if, uh, that I'm familiar with, or if you're on the opposite side of the globe, I'll mention your name. But anyway, uh, it's, we're, we're glad to have you here. I'm Delighted and honored to be part of this time with you. And um, so we talked a little bit about baptism. And um, uh, if you've never been baptized, I want to encourage you to go to your local church. And if there's a time where we can get together, if you live locally here in California, uh, let me know. Or if I'm in your area, I'll come by and we can, we can have a little baptism service for you and your family. 
Uh, I know just a few months ago, I had a baptism for a friend of mine whose, whose son was turning, uh, I think he was four years old, but he wanted him to be baptized. No, I was, he's older than that. He was six. He was just going into first grade. He wanted his son to be baptized. And so, so I, I agreed to do that. And, and um, uh, we, we went to, to do the baptism. And prior to the baptism, I explained what baptism was, how it's the sign and seal of, of God's grace in our, on our lives, that it replaces circumcision, that, that um, uh, and, and, and I, when, I, when I finished explaining what baptism was all about, now we're going to have this baptism service, his, his mother, his mother said, well, can I be baptized? And I said, sure you can, of course you can. And suddenly her brother, and she comes from a, she comes from a, she admitted, she admittedly comes from a family who doesn't have any religious background whatsoever. So suddenly her brother says, can I be baptized? And his wife is there, she says, can I be baptized? And their kids are there, they said, can we be baptized? And, and some other friends, by the time we were done, I baptized everybody. There must have been 20 people at this baptism and they all wanted to be baptized. So we baptized 20 people. And it's amazing how, how God has given us this beautiful gift of baptism to be able to let us know that, that our, our sins are forgiven, that we are, robe, we are given the robe of righteousness to be able to enter into the presence of God and to experience his beauty and his gift for us. And um, so that's what baptism is all about. You know, if, if this is a little church service, then one of the things you do at a church service is you give your tithes and your offerings. Uh, the Bible is pretty clear. Malachi 3 tenths says, bring your tithe to the storehouse and put me to the test. <laughs> Isn't that an interesting thing? Jesus, the Bible says, quotes God as saying, put me to the test and see. Put me to the test and see if I will not bring out more blessings than your storehouses can contain. That's quite a statement. Put me to the test. And the way we put him to the test is we bring our tithes and our offerings. Now a tithe is 10% of your income. That's a lot. And for most people, the whole idea of giving 10% of what I have, holy mackerel, that's a huge commitment. And I, I, it takes a lot of faith to do that. It takes a lot of spiritual and emotional growth to do that. It's a tremendous test of, of our faith. But I've done it all of my life. Uh, I've, done, I've double tithed most of my life. And double tithe means you don't, give, you don't stop at 10%. You give 20% because, the, because what happens in the New Testament is, is we are given a new law. And the law isn't, isn't, to, isn't to give 10%. It's to give a measure of your faith. Uh, the, the New Testament tells us with what measure you give, it shall be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. With what measure you give, it shall be given back to you. So I decided, hey, I want to give more than 10% because I want more blessings. And I have truly been blessed. I have four of the greatest kids in the whole world. And if you look at the blessings that I have, there's nothing that I'm more blessed with than my kids and my grandkids. And uh, the, the fact that I have the, the ability to be able to, to, to love them and to, 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 to have them is just the greatest blessings in the entire world. So anyway, back to tithes and offerings. If you wish to make a tithe or an offering in this church, now the reason it's called an offering is because a lot of people's faith aren't at that point of being able to give 10%. And so they don't. They, they just aren't capable of doing that. And so we know that with what measure you give, it shall be given back to you. So if you're at 1%, a half a percent, doesn't matter. But here's what you do. You go to the website, robertshulerministries.org. This is a different website than the, the new one that I'm creating for instructions and everything. robertshulerministries.org, and you will find a, a donation page there, and you can make your donations, and that's the way we... That's the way we collect our offerings here. And that's the way, the, the way the, the church works. So anyway, 
you can go to and make your 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 donations there. So um, uh, back to baptism and back to our scripture because I read some other things in this scripture I think which may have shocked a lot of you, um, and and that was the power that we are given when we have the faith to be there. And here's the, some of the things that they said that you'll be able to handle snakes, you'll be able to, well, let me just read it to you. It says, they will, those who, who, this will be the proof that people who believe will be able to do these things. They will use my name to force demons out of people. That's, a, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? Use the name of Jesus to force demons out of people. And I've seen it happen. The demons I'm thinking about aren't necessarily spiritual things that have come, spiritual creatures that have invaded their life and have taken over their minds and their body. The demons that I've seen is the demon of alcoholism. And I know there are people who are listening to me today who have dealt with the demon of alcoholism and in the name of Jesus has cast it out. It's still, it's still a threat for them. But because of the love of Jesus and the fact that Jesus cares for them, are able to, to indeed be able to cast that demon away. And there are other demons. The, de the, the, the biggest de demon we fight and face is, the, is this demon of self-doubt. Oh, the demon of self-doubt continues. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the demon of self... Well, let me take a sip of water, coffee around. <clears throat> the demon of self-doubt is the one that looks in the mirror in the morning and says, Who do you think you are? You, don't, you can't do that. It's the, the demon of self-doubt is the one that, that says... That, that doesn't believe that we have really been saved by the grace of God, that we're not worthy, that we're not capable of, of accepting the gifts of God. Uh, it's the ones that listen to the lies of Satan, which put us down, hold us back, keep us from experiencing all the promises and the, and the joys of God. Th these are the demons that we really face. These are the demons that touch every single human being. And what we do every morning is we declare, first and foremost, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And in the name of Jesus, those, those thoughts can be eradicated from our mind. We can pull those weeds out of our mind and start planting healthy, positive seeds, which is the promises of God. And the promises of God abound. They're they're endless. They go on forever. That God loves you. God cares for you. God has a plan for your life. You've been chosen. You have been paid. You have been paid by Christ. God has bought you. Uh, he, he created you for a purpose. He loves you more than anybody in the entire world. There's nobody in the entire world that God loves more than you. I shared that with somebody once and, and they looked at me kind of funny and as if you got to be nuts. I said, seriously, there's nobody on planet Earth that God loves more than you. And it's the truth. God loves you just as much as he loves me. He loves you just as much as he loves Mother Teresa. God loves you just as much as he loves anybody on planet Earth. There is nobody on planet Earth that God loves more than you. If you stop and think about that, uh, that should really be the, be the foundation of, of your mental process. And, I, and then with that, you can start planting the seeds. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> you can start planting positive seeds that are going to produce positive, healthy thoughts so that you can truly experience the wonder and the bounty and the goodness of God. Uh, welcome, Corrine, all the way from Cape Town, uh, South Africa. So I'm sorry your reception is bad here, but, but
but um, we'll, I'll be posting this later, so maybe you can watch it on, on the post. But anyway, let me, let me remind you that I'm going to be coming out with all of these classes, that all of these classes are going to help you lift you when you're down. You're going to be able to share them with your friends. But in order for you to be able to know about these, you have to go to my new website, robertschulerinspiration.com, and there's a landing page there where you can leave your, your email address uh, because I won't be able to let you know what's, what's happening if I don't have your email address. So please go there, robertschulerinspiration.com, uh, and then if you wish to make your, your, your offering this morning, you do that at another website, uh, robertschulerministries.org, and I'll be linking these together when it's all done. Uh, but we're in, it's, in, it's under construction, and we're in process of making that happen. So, um, again, I want to remind you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice, and we will be glad in it that uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you now for, uh, for the last few minutes. And um, I hope you have a beautiful Easter Sunday 3. And let me simply close with this. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. And you're lying down and you're rising up and you're laboring and you're leisure in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you.